Hey guys, this is Domsky, and as many of you know, Halo 4 has been a disappointment to say the least. 343 Industries was given a huge opportunity, and they failed. Simple as that. I think we can all agree Halo 4 is a great game at the core, it plays super smooth and looks great, however, there are too many negatives that stand right in the way. In this video, I'm strictly going to be talking about multiplayer, as this is what Halo is all about. This is what made Halo 1 through 3 so incredibly popular for so long. The life cycle of each of these games was enormous because of the balanced, engaging, and rewarding aspects of multiplayer. On the other hand, we have Halo 4, only 3 months in and the population is continuing to drop at a significant pace. Here's a graph showing the daily peak population up until February 9th. From November to January, the average daily peak population is down 62%. And only once since January 6th has the population peaked above 100k. For a game as big as Halo 4, these are terrible numbers. This clearly shows that the majority of people don't like Halo 4 and have already moved on to other games. So, what's wrong? Why have people stopped playing? There are three main reasons. The lack of a skill-based ranking system, bad maps, and unbalanced gameplay and randomness which takes away from the competitive aspect. Let's start with lack of a skill-based ranking system. Halo 4 followed in the footsteps of Reach by having a rank system based on XP or credits. You cannot lose rank, it is simply based off how much of the game you play, whether that be matchmaking, Spartan Ops, or Forge. There are 130 Spartan ranks in Halo 4 and you're rewarded with new armor, guns, abilities, and specializations by ranking up. The problem is that people have come to expect some sort of skill based ranking system out of a Halo game. It is part of what made Halo 2 and 3 so successful for so long that 1 to 50 ranking system that you felt invested in and could be proud of. Some of my greatest memories of Halo 2 and 3 was working my way up the ranks and knowing I was getting better with each passing day. Every game had great significance as a win or loss meant possibly going up or down a rank. That meant whenever I was playing a ranked playlist, I knew I was going to face stiff opponents that wanted to win just as much as I did. This is ultimately what kept me playing Halo 2 and 3 for so long. I even remember the exact map and game type in Halo 3 I was playing when I finally got my 50 for the first time. It was Team Slayer on Snowbound and we tied 48 to 48. When the game ended and I saw that 50, I remember feeling like I accomplished so much. It was an amazing feeling and I wanted to do it again in other playlists and help my friends experience the same thing. Halo 3 had a perfect, ranked and social playlists. If you felt like trying and giving it your all, play ranked. And if you just wanted to take it easy and have some fun, play social. This is where Halo 4 messed up big time. Matchmaking feels like one huge social playlist. There's no incentive to win, no motivation to improve. This results in people quitting games, not trying, or only caring about things such as their KD ratios. This eventually results in people not playing Halo anymore, and this is what we are seeing. Things such as join in progress only add to the social aspect which is killing Halo. Due to the uproar, 343 have announced that a competitive skill rank is targeted to launch in April with a familiar 1 to 50 system. However, it will only be visible on Halo Waypoint and not in game. In addition, a competitive playlist is set to launch in mid February with settings similar to previous Halos. Although this is a step in the right direction, I can hardly see this reviving Halo. Next, let's move on to maps. One of the reasons Halo Reach failed was due to lack of multiplayer maps that shipped with the game. There were only 8 maps and most were recycled from the campaign. Bungie really dropped the ball and that's why if you play Halo Reach multiplayer, you will spend most of the time in Forge World maps created by the community. Although some are good, they all end up looking the same and you end up playing the same dull grey map over and over. Moreover, I think we can all agree the maps in Halo 4 are a huge improvement from Halo Reach. They are all thought out and not one is recycled from the campaign. Just like in single player, the graphics and detail in all 10 multiplayer maps that shipped with the game are incredible, and that's where 343 Industries deserves a round of applause. It's hard to believe Halo 4 looks as good as it does for being on the Xbox 360, which came out in 2005. Despite all of this, there are problems. Halo 4 shipped with 10 maps, 5 of those being big team maps suitable for no less than 16 players. I mean, these maps are huge. The thing is, there is only one true big team playlist, which is Big Team Infinity Slayer. How can they reason making half the maps out of the box just for one playlist? Now, I know in Dominion you also play on the big team maps, however, this just doesn't work. The maps are way too big for 6v6, and with everything going on in Dominion, trying to hold and capture 3 bases, and all the reinforcements in the form of vehicles and weapons, it should be an 8v8 playlist. This leaves 5 maps for all of the other playlists. 
I almost want to say 4 as Complex should be seen as a big team map. Throw a Warthog on each side and 14 to 16 players should easily fill the map. The only 4 small to medium maps are Haven, Adrift, Abandon, and Solace. And if you play anything else than Dominion or Big Team, these are the same 4 maps to choose from every time. What makes this worse is that these maps aren't very good and don't play well, with the exception of Haven. There's nothing memorable, fun, or original in my opinion when playing on most of the maps in Halo 4. This is a big disappointment as there are so many amazing maps from Halo 1, 2, and 3 that to this day I enjoy playing on because they are balanced, fun, and unique in their own way. Going back to Halo 2, we have classics such as Lockout, Midship, Ivory Tower, Bieber Creek, Ascension, Zanzibar, and Coagulation. Not to mention all the great map packs that came later. Each of these maps had their own distinct feel and style and played great. It's these maps that we remember when we think of Halo. Halo 3 followed suit with classics such as Guardian, Narrows, Construct, High Ground, Valhalla, and my favorite, The Pit. These maps played perfectly and each one offered a different experience. Some maps called for more up-close battles and others long range. This is something Halo 4 doesn't have. Because of the weapons, armor abilities, and maps in the game, the classic up-close battles that we're used to from Halo have pretty much disappeared. And if you don't like using one particular weapon, you won't last long in matchmaking. In addition, something that made the maps in both Halo 2 and 3 so original and fun were all the interactive elements featured on a bunch of the maps. They were a nice touch, and only added to the overall gameplay in an entertaining and strategic way. The maps felt alive, and this resulted in gameplay like no other. There are three map packs for Halo 4, one of which I've already dropped in December, only a month after the game released. It is pretty obvious that the maps in the Crimson map pack were already made before the game released and should have been included in the final product. If you don't know, they are all big team maps and should play no less than 8v8. So at the moment, Halo 4 has 8 big team maps and 5 small to medium sized maps, yet there is only one true big team playlist. Now how does this make any sense? This is a big reason Halo 4 is doing so poorly. No variety in maps for the majority of the playlists, and out of the maps, there were only a few good ones. Lastly, let's talk about unbalanced gameplay and randomness. What made previous Halo so popular was how balanced and competitive multiplayer was. Everyone started on equal grounds, and you had to work as a team to gain map control in order to lock down weapons and power-ups. Even if you didn't have the greatest shot or strafe, you could still be super successful if you studied the maps, where the weapons were located, and how long they took to respawn. This system was great as it forced players to be more aggressive when power weapons or power ups such as overshield and camo appeared on the map. This resulted in exciting and action packed gameplay. Every Halo up until Halo 4 implemented this system, a system which was very successful. 343 decided to go in another direction and by doing so they turned Halo 4 multiplayer into a chaotic run and gun arcade experience full of randomness. And that's the word I want to emphasize, randomness. World Ordinance, which is present in almost every playlist, is completely random. Every two minutes on the game clock, a random weapon will drop at a random place on the map. This eliminates strategy and belongs in a social setting where the game isn't taken as seriously. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing that a sniper rifle has just dropped where the enemy team is and now they have a huge advantage. Moving on, Infinity Slayer is a new game mode 343 have introduced for Halo 4. In this mode, there's personal ordnance. As you earn medals, you fill up your ordnance meter, and when that meter is full, you get to choose from three randomized power weapons, grenades, or power ups. Here's a picture of the ordnance frequency for both medium and large maps. As you can see, each reward has a number that determines its percentage chance of being picked. For example, on a large map, you have a 3 out of 18 or 16.6% .6 chance of getting to choose from one of three snipers in the game every time you fill your ordnance meter. This means most of the time you won't get a sniper, but rather the more frequent weapons such as the saw and needler. This clearly shows that Infinity Slayer is not a competitive game type. It belongs in a social setting because of the random aspects of personal ordnance. It feels like an arcade experience, almost like playing Fiesta Slayer, because I never know what weapon my next opponent will have. This is where Halo 4 messed up big time. They changed the core experience we have all come to love from Halo in the past. They removed strategy and teamwork in a bunch of ways, and this is a big reason people aren't playing as much. In addition, we have unbalanced gameplay. 
343 decided to go the way of Call of Duty by introducing classes where you can choose everything from your primary weapon, to your grenade type, to your armor ability, and so on. This is something never seen before in a Halo title, and is a welcome change in my opinion. I believe if it can be balanced, then why not? However, there are issues with some of the weapons available for loadouts. Starting with primary weapons, there is one clear winner, that being the DMR. In my opinion, the DMR should be considered a power weapon due to how accurate and quick you can kill your enemies at almost any range. The BR is a close second and more balanced in my opinion, seeing as it has spread and is not as effective at long range. The other five primary weapons are almost useless and by using them, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. This is due to how overpowered the DMR is. It has turned Halo into a long range shooter rather than that classic Halo experience full of both up close and long range encounters. The only secondary weapon I have an issue with is the bolt shot. It is like having a shotgun in your back pocket the whole game. The fact that this weapon is available for loadouts is ridiculous. It is a power weapon and should be placed on maps instead. It encourages camping and is simply too easy to use. The charge bolt shot is a one shot kill from a pretty generous distance. As you can see here, the bolt shot can kill you up to this red line. Further than this and it will only bring down your shields. What is surprising is that the UNSC shotgun has a shorter one shot kill distance. It can kill you up to this red line. This demonstration clearly shows that the bolt shot does not belong as a loadout weapon. It ruins the balance of gameplay and is flat out annoying. Halo 4 is a game with great potential. It does so many things right but at the same time it changed the core experience we've all come to love from Halo in the past in too many ways.